giving a thing an identity is a manner of, um, we think, giving it a secure hardware element, right? This is um, really safe and solid because then it's not so easy to change that. <laughs> Yes, okay. So what we basically do is um, the, 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 the elevator pitch is we build the hardware that um, or the hardware element that you can then use and buy liquor uh, with at the vending machine with your identity without showing your whole identity. And um, yes, so um, the um, trust is the essential thing that enables us to um, trade with each other and it's what creates wealth in the end. And um, so the thing is with um, trust that it's quite easy to handle when you have um, cash transactions and this worked really well, but when you go in the digital realm, you're confronted with a whole lot of challenges you need to overcome in order to keep up the business processes you did all along. And this is what we basically been talking about and identity is one essential part of this. So the example um, we have for this, there, there she is. Yes, there you go. Um, it's the Tante Emma laden basically, right? I mean, this was um, a, a good and a, the, the good world, the peaceful world. Uh, lots of people remember, I personally don't that much. <laughs> But um, still, I, uh, uh, there was a startup in Dusseldorf, Emma's Enkel, there's my connection with this now. So um, the, the thing was with, with her was that she was basically, um, in a sense, I was conducting with her the business directly and um, she was doing lots of different things as well on top of this. For example, she knew my identity um, when I came there because we were in the same city in the same town and um, I could, could trust her and she could trust me. So um, one thing is she could give me credit if she knows and trusts me, right? But um, she was more of that, right? So um, this, is, this is where we started. And so um, now we are in this time of, we already had this um, slide obviously because it's a famous quote, but it's uh, good nonetheless on the internet. Um, nobody knows you're a dog and so um, nobody knows that um, the business doesn't know if you are trustworthy and the other way around and therefore we need measurements in between that handle these problems we are facing. So um, the, sorry, yeah. And um, the thing is with the identity that we not only have a uh, just one identity, there are different identities like we have a legal identity, we have a social identity and um, in different contexts, different identities apply. So there have been many attempts to build trust in the Internet. Um, there are some of these things. And um, so, so, for example, let's take marketing and branding, right? I mean, uh, b before we had all this, this marketing, right, um, people were, you can't imagine, trying to sell their goods through their features, right? Not through building emotions, but we all know that doesn't work. And therefore, um, big brands needed to be built. But what does a brand do essentially? A brand pools customer attention and customer trust on itself and therefore can monetize it and sell a premium service. This continues then that you then, if you take the brand, then you have a retailer that serves the same function, pooling of attention and trust. And what we now have in the purely digital realm is exactly that. We have platforms <coughs> like Facebook, Google, eBay, Amazon, and they are again pooling attention and trust under their brand under their roof and they are monetizing this with their um, they have their walled gardens and if you want in you have to pay up and because they have network effects the bigger they get the quicker the company can boil the frog if you get the drift so this is obviously not good and with the accelerating progress we see in the world this doesn't look like it's gonna get any better soon right by uh, 2020, there are expected to be 20 billion 
connected things, so connected devices that will interact with us. And there is a tremendous need for um, identity for these things because we need, for example, one really important thing is addressability and trustable addressability. I can't have this if I don't, don't have, have, have a solid identifier for this device I can rely on, right? So um, this, 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 this extends, right? We have the smart fridges, we have the uh, liquor vending machine, right? <laughs> I, I really like this example. And um, all these things um, need identity to do business. And if we extrapolate at some point, we are talking about machine to machine business these need to do business with them as well. And there, um, there, there needs to be this um, identity and trust layer between them as well, that this can uh, function and um, function properly. So again, tr that trust enables us to do business with each other and um, uh, doing business is what creates wealth. So, the question is what we are trying to solve with peers is um, how do we create trust with and between devices, right? And for this, we need to uh, get this right. So an example, what, what we have today is um, like you, you buy a Sonos, uh, so, so Sonos speaker, right? It's a great product, many people like it, but then you have to set it up. And, and if you set it up in this example, you see what is happening, right? You have to do your Sonos account, you have to verify with them, they want to log into you, only you can use the service, right? And we can expect if everybody is doing this for themselves, they're building their walled gardens, it's not only making it hard to get connected devices, but the, the actual layer that will leverage our economy to the next level is um, basically getting them to transact real value with and between each other. H how are we going to get there if we're going to keep up these practices, right? We need some way where we can tie all these things together. And this is um, obviously where blockchain comes in. And this is where, um, where, where we um, put our energy and um, try to come up with um, good and fitting solutions to help us uh, get, get a good functioning and equal um, world. So our values basically are these. What, oh, sorry, wrong button. So this is, this is what, what, what Pierce is about, right? Pierce is about buying fair. It's about selling smart, using easy and trading safely, right? And safety does not only apply to the business that is sure that it gets the money, right? We know that there's a lot of cost in, 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 in failed transactions in the current, trans in the, uh, uh, current infrastructure we have for this. Um, but it's, it's, it's about um, the customer as well. He needs to be protected on the other side, right? Maybe I, I did identify, right? Okay, now the, 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 the device knows I'm, I'm 18, I can have a beer. But, but, but what happens if there is no beer coming out? He got my money, but I don't get a beer. We have to address these problems as well. And maybe for a small thing like a vending machine, this seems like trivial or not even important, but you have to extrapolate and imagine where this can lead. This is just obviously a metaphor and there are more complex behavior will evolve from this. And one, one more important point that is really, really important that is included in safety is the safety of data protection, right? If we, we actually, like, like, I don't want any of my personal data. I don't care for GDPR or not. I don't want my personal data on a blockchain. And I don't want my personal data on a blockchain uh, encrypted as, as well, because encryption has a half time cycle. At some point, it's going to be broken. There's going to be a collision or something. And then they can read out all my data. I thought, huh, five years, uh, I was safe. But then everything is open and transparent. So. This is not good practice as well. So this is really, really important. And we, we, we really try to, to do this right. So yeah, this is basically um, uh, what, what, what it's about. It's, it's about combining um, trust, simplicity, equality, um, equality, and revolutioning the way people, business, and devices trans transact with each other. And they become then peers in this sense. So 
what what the the, the course that um, for example with the identity and the things what is the topic from today um, giving a thing an identity is a manner of um, we think giving it a secure hardware element right this is um, really safe and solid because then it's not so easy to change that and we can use that identifier from the device and actually link it to a smart contract in the uh, in, in a blockchain so we can have um, any um, logic, any basic logic operation we can have in there and leverage all the things we have with blockchain that are great um, so that people can permissionlessly um, innovate on these existing quasi backend structures and um, that um, the processes are trusted, etc. Right? And then we can combine these things and there is no easy way to disrupt this connection because they are inherently uh, secured by the hardware element on the device and this will allow us to basically um, do all the connected device transaction handling and, and, and enable to build all the infrastructure on top of it, right? This is just one element we need at the base layer so we can build on, on top of this. Obviously this is more complex than we can get over in such a, a short, short amount of time. So, um, and, and this is where, where how, how this will then, then look, right? This is where we are right now. Maybe the, this is not the, the perfect thing, but I hope you, you get where we are at. So right now we have these centralized um, services that we use. We need to identify for everything. We need to uh, register or um, authorize, um, etc. cetera. Um, they are C load, single use cases, and yes, and registrations, logins, and payments. Nobody wants that. And, um, where we uh, want to go and where this is, is hopefully going is that we basically the, the power moves away and the power moves more to the edge is the idea of this, right? So we have all these devices connected in a layer in between that allows us to use the service, use the experience with just one logging. Like, for example, let's take the example from yeah, ID for me, they are doing the same thing structurally from the idea now that this is not a service but this is a whole ecosystem built of blockchains and a whole infrastructure that needs to be interoperable to really reach this vision and 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 have this and get the benefits of um, having this and it's not only about about just having one logging right there's way more that is um, tied into this it's about allowing all these devices to work with each other right so the car can go shopping, uh, pay for parking, and, and uh, get, get the gas or electricity that it needs, right? And the devices being able to optimize processes together, right? You can have devices, if you get a good structure like this, you can have devices that act in an economic interest, right? They basically do, for example, let, let's go a little bit blue sky thinking here, yes, just to get a point across. We, we again, we have there uh, some storage where there are, there are some goods and I want um, a something from the storage. I already know that there is something in the storage because there is a, a, a good uh, a pooling and discovery engine that I know what the goods are and if I want to order them, maybe there is a, um, let's say, a self-driving car or a drone. Drone, yeah, you hear drones all the time, but <laughs> um, let's just take the drone uh, for this now. and. Maybe there are several drones and th some of them are operated in a self-owning way and some are owned by some companies, right? And um, you basically want to, you don't want to talk to the drone directly, but you want to talk to an aggregate of drones and an aggregate of storage and N steps behind this, you need to tie together to get the service, the product you want in the end, and then just get all the best possibilities served to you and decide maybe between one or two or three things right and then get this delivered the drone needs to be then autonomously able to sell and buy and um, have some be an economic entity in this thing and to allow this to become as every human needs an identity everything that actually wants to do transactions in a seamless manner needs an identity as well yes there you go so um, I have a question. Uh, okay, I'll allow so it. If I, can, if I can, you know, buy in an Amazon shop without yes. having to pay. Um, without having to pay. Having can, to can you tell me? Okay. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Without having to pay actively, right? Yeah. 
right? So I just go in there and I go out again and I... <laughs> oh, okay, you mean the retail thing. Okay, yeah, now I got you. If I can order in my Amazon speaker just by voice, mm -hmm. um, if I can order on the phone, if yes. I have dash buttons. So yes. I do get very close to all the use cases exactly. without anything like blockchain. In the exactly. So you have Amazon in the, in the middle. So there's this joke. Um, it's, it's just only, it, it's about in the end, before I answer this, right? The power we have, that the biggest power is the consumer, right? If we would organize together, we could do tremendous things. We could stop crying and just do shit, right? But we don't do this, right? Why, why don't we do this? It's actually really simple. It's in the system. A small group will always dominate about a, a big group because the small group is in a particular interest and it's going to fight for its interest vehemently while the big majority is going to be huh, 10 cents more for the cigarettes. I, uh, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm not going on the streets, Ten, right? You know where I'm getting it. So there's this joke. Amazon started um, in the beginning. Hello, we are Amazon. We sell books, right? Now it's 2022. Welcome, prime citizen. Please go into your prime home and don't leave until late, right? Yeah. This is basically the thing. So, if you don't care for this or if you're not afraid of this or if you say it's okay that Amazon does all these things and has this middleman position and it's okay how Amazon treats these things, then, then you can use Amazon. And I use Amazon as well, so it's not like I'm, I'm, I'm a saint or something, right? But it's about options. The problem is we don't have an option. We don't have an alternative to Amazon. We don't even get to the question if the service um, is, is resonates with our personal values because there is no option. So we need an option that is usable and that can compete, but without doing the same stuff again, without becoming centralized again, without becoming the quasi emperor of the next 10 years, right? But in a way that is equal for the consumer and for the customer and for businesses and new businesses that want to emerge. And therefore, you need something like blockchain or decentralized ledger technology or just any infrastructure that allows you to tie different services from different parties together and allow them to have aligned interest and work together to give the customer the best experience, right? This is basically what we are about and what drives us in a sense. In a nutshell, my self-driving car yes. is empowered to drive to an Aral filling station yes. as well as empowered to go to a shell driver station. Exactly. And at, at, at each filling handle or, or whatever the handle who then puts that in. Yes. Know, but to <coughs> identify itself, I have the authority to buy at Aral, I have the authority to have a shell exactly. without having a shell and an Aral car. This is, this is the last part. This is the interesting part, really. It's, it's, it's authorized, it has the money, it can pay for it, and therefore it can operate with these things because most people like money. Yeah. And and one thing I would like to really quick add to, to what you were asking, uh, what Amazon is doing there, and Amazon is working really well today. Right? I would guess that most of us, if not all of us, are customers there. I, I for one, shop at Amazon, so <laughs> <laughs> I have to promote that today. Uh, but it works because, first of all, you are human. Mm. And secondly, because you're registered there. Okay, they know you, they can do face recognition, et cetera, et cetera. They have your bank information. If you wanted to have the same experience in another store, you couldn't have it unless you signed up first. So you may, be, you may have present everything is fine, you have liquidity of money in the bank, you still got food and shop there in the same way unless you sign up first. Um, so that's one thing. Another item is uh, if you are not a human being, if you're a machine, then you're lacking the identity. So Amazon doesn't provide that service to machines, as well, which is one of the topics here that machines do need a verifiable, trustworthy identity to conduct business. Strictly speaking, identity itself is not enough. There's a lot more to trust than that. Okay, so we need that as well. That needs to be established. And then uh, one one thing that we foresee with devices becoming more and more prevalent, there's uh, reports out there that like in 2021 or 22, there will be five connected devices on this planet for every inhabitant here, every citizen living somewhere on the planet Earth. So at some point we expect that identity for devices will even be more important, at least by the numbers, than identity for people. Mm -hmm. And then we can have use cases like what you described, Christopher, where hmm. cars, drones, other devices can act 
autonomously can optimize themselves. They can conduct trade with each other. For that is it's required. And just to, to kind of sketch a bit of a, I don't know, if it is doomsday, but some, one of the negative sides of these uh, centralized companies that we have today. Uh, there are some people out there that say that uh, only the large GAFAs, the Googles, the, the Amazons, the Facebooks, and so on of this world will actually have a chance at succeeding with some of these things like self-driving cars because they have the networks, network effect. They have this power. Uh, that becomes very worrisome when there's more and more devices out there. Uh, just the, the Sonos example actually is an experience I made personally. I bought these speakers a couple of years ago, was happy using them, and then with the next software update, all of a sudden Sonos tells me, thanks for the money, and these were not cheap speakers. Um, if you want to keep using them, you now have to register. Maybe we need to talk if this is even legal for them to do that. Uh, I was quite upset about it, okay? There's other reports out there, uh, people who get banned from the service providers, and Airbnb and Amazon for no obvious reason, mm -hmm. no explanation, we just don't want to have you on our platform anymore, and you're a total victim to that. You can't object, nothing. So they get to decide who gets to do business with who. Mm -hmm. And that's a bad thing. I mean, like if you are banned from Airbnb, uh, there is somebody who has an apartment, he'd be perfectly happy to rent it out to you, but Airbnb wouldn't let you. So who are they to decide? Right? So and that's why we say blockchain has the ability to level the playing field here and make people peers again in doing commerce. And you can do commerce peer to peer. And there is no central platform involved. And if both parties agree that this is a good business, we both want to conduct it, we have informed consent from both parties. Off you go. Yes. So this is basically right. This is to, to tie this in, right? We don't need a uh, party misusing its power without one party drawing the short straw, without one party to suffer financially, without machines with bad usability. That's, uh, that's the <laughs> core point. You don't want to have 10 steps you need to do to get something done you could have done in one thing. So our superpower, this is uh, actually the first time in the slide we, we actually talk really about blockchain, just really short, a blockchain platform that transforms customers, businesses, and devices into peers. That's the idea. And this sounds, maybe, maybe if you're a critic, this sounds whatever, generic, but it really isn't if you think about it. And you don't know all the story, sadly, and it's, it's but it's really actually, actually a good idea. So in the end, one of the effects we want to achieve is basically disintermediate, um, not only on this technological platform side, but as well give chances for business to be disintermediated from, from an attention uh, part of you, right? So that you get alternative discovery methods, right? So you um, uh, basically bringing the customer and the business really close together on different layers is really important. And the part is, we, we do, we, we, we really care about commerce with machines, but we actually are no payment provider. This is really important. We don't want to earn anything on any payment. These the payments should be free, payments should be seamlessly, and you, could, you should be able to choose if you are paying with, 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 with Bitcoin, uh, other currencies, or uh, PayPal or something you want to use in this point, if this is or credit card, if you just only am um, used to credit card, why should we don't allow you to use this, right? This goes back to the usability. So it's about bringing the platforms together and then they can do again, do the business again, like they used to be directly, right? And then it's not um, regarding the data. Uh, I, I wrote this down. We won't uh, write down any data on the blockchain um, because this obviously would make no sense, but just, just we, we can just relay the data right through the customer, right? The blockchain doesn't need to know the data. Nobody needs to know the data. Only the retailer that wants to send me something to my home, he needs to know my address and my name and maybe even not uh, all of this, right? So um, this, this on that part. All right, and um, this is again just uh, a few key points you see here. So on the on on the base layer, there will be a, bla uh, a blockchain-based platform, right? And um, you obviously need things like scalability, reliability, security, compliance. Really interesting extensibility, but uh, auf Wiedersehen. Um, the identity uh, management part, right? Um, there will be a way to do KYC, 
right? Um, this is where we need to handle the identity of the customer. And um, the uh, know your business is really important. If you want to transact business in Germany, obviously somebody needs to know who you are and in, in lots of places in the world this as well. And KYD, know your device. And we achieve this through, as I mentioned briefly earlier before, through a secure hardware element that we can tie in with the blockchain infrastructure to model the logic. And there you go with the logic, whoops, uh, la. Um, smart contracts, right, then these tie in with these. Um, uh, we have uh, business, uh, yeah, uh, quality assurance, let me go, uh, what's interesting, yeah, currency management, um, search. Search is really in 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 interesting, right? Like I said already, but I like to say it three or four times again because I think this is really important uh, way that you can discover things without you needing to pay Google to be listed on top of this, right? Um, and um, yes, uh, a brand, this is really interesting. So um, I'm not sure how much time I have. If I have to stop, I stop talking. Uh, one minute, okay, yeah. All right, so um, the brand part, right? So we are talking here about a blockchain platform, a technical solution, and we're talking about being open and, and letting everyone participate. But we are not unrealistically that we're just going to say, all right, here's this amazing technology. Now you go do and do stuff, right? Because then nothing will happen, right? We're going to lead, right? Like lead through example. This is how you build open source. This is how you build communities that actually work. And this is how you drive change. And what we're going to do is really simple. We use something that knows and works and the customer knows. And it's using a trusted logo, right? This sounds... Not that amazing, but it really is, right? So um, what, what we basically offer, what is the business model? There will be a company on top of this platform operating that we're going to continue and work on, right? They are not tied together. There can other bees that can work with us or against us how they like, but what we're going to provide is this logo. Then you know that it was implemented by the guys that built this platform. It's going to be... Um, trusted and audited because in blockchain, yes, it's trustless. It's amazingly trustless, but only if you're a 20 plus years uh, cryptographic expert who can check every smart contract he's interacting with. If you can't do this, you need to trust anyone. And if it's an audit company, right? And this is what we're going to hide behind a brand, right? It's just going to, you can trust this, this works. And if there's something happens, there's somebody who can knock on the door and uh, be angry about, right? So customer support. And this brand is actually business facing in the first place, right? So we are about bringing existing companies on there, right? So if you have a hardware manufacturer, right? What is the problem of the hardware manufacturer in the 21st century? It's changing business models. We are going away from just manufacturing or producing products to producing services and experiences more and more tied in together with IT. And most of the existing great, amazing, solid competing German companies, for example, and there are obviously companies like this all around the world, they don't have the capabilities, nor do they have the money or any means of achieving this know-how. So obviously there are needs to people that are focused on them helping them being integrated and using and leveraging this new technology. And um, obviously, in your own mind, everybody thinks of oneself as a good guy, right? This is part of the personal identity psychological structure. But what we really want to do is bring equality and a good user experience in the end so that both sides can profit, win, and prosper together. And therefore, I think... It's just a small point, but I think it's a really important point that shows how we think, how we go about things. Yeah, reporting as well. So <laughs> um, overall benefits, right? Happy business relationships for our partners and the best possible user experience for their customers. This is we're going to focus on. And yes, there you go. These are the companies we are working with. Amazing team so far, and uh, some are gonna, going to be uh, joining, I imagine. And we are a growing team of, of amazing people. And yeah, thank you personally <laughs> for your attention. And if you have any questions, toss them in.